This week, we got some of the most impressive tech demos I've experienced since the original iPhone and Palm Pre, but in a very different way. And I know a lot of you originally signed up to this channel for Apple reviews and news and rumors. So I really appreciate all of you sticking around with me as technology keeps evolving and my own circumstances and interests shift and evolve with it. But when I watch OpenAI introduce GPT-4 and it turns a rough napkin sketch into a fully coded website, but also rationalizes lying to get a human to complete a captcha for it. When I watch Google's AI for Workspace take notes during a live meet, sum up those notes, turn them into slides and share them out. When I watch Microsoft's Copilot for Office pull forensic level insight from Excel data or Midjourney 5 make hands that don't look digitally deformed or innumerably inhuman anymore, or even just see Facebook's model leak out on the internet, or any number of dumb presidential deepfakes roast each other through rounds of magic or D&D &D on video, I'm horrified and delighted, laughing and screaming in my heart, wondering if we're at the beginning of the end of the biological bootloader phase, or the end of the beginning of us dragging ourselves out of the primordial informational ooze. See, when I was in high school, there was no mainstream internet yet. So I spent days, weeks, months locked in moldy old libraries, flipping through drawers of Dewey Decimal catalog cards, microfilm, microfiche, poring over dusty, outdated encyclopedias and tomes, writing by hand pages and pages of notes. And that was not just time, but huge chunks of my life consuming that I had to put into just finding the raw information before I could even start, before I could even do any of the actual work. And then came the internet, the World Wide Web, Mosaic and Netscape and Internet Explorer and Safari and Chrome, desktops and laptop computers with 56K and broadband modems, AltaVista and Google Search, Wikipedia and citation needed, a billion blogs and homepages and commercial sites that solved for that process faster than you could say open angle bracket, marquee blink slash close angle bracket under construction dot gif gif. It made the storage and collection, dissemination and retrieval of information trivial. So I no longer, we no longer had to travel to libraries, search for sources and take endless notes before we could begin that work. We just had to Google for it right from home or from work, but it was still, we were still, I was still stuck behind a desktop or a laptop, a modem or a network cable, eventually like really early Wi-Fi until Nokia and Handspring and Palm and Blackberry. And then yes, the iPhone came along and not just a multi-touch interface that made it so accessibly, delightfully mainstream, but it's conqueror derived browser code base that was just small enough that it could really put the actual web in our hands combined with 2G, 3G, 4G LTE, 5G NR radios. And that made something else trivial working from pretty much anywhere, any when with the only real limitation being the size, the same size that made an iPhone or an Android phone so damn portable also made it so damn awkward and annoying to actually really work on, especially type on. And yes, there were voice interfaces that hoped, some of us hoped would offer that Kit Knight Rider, Star Trek computer, Avengers, Jarvis based dream, Siri and Alexa and assistant, but they never delivered on it. You could set a timer, you could play a song, you could look up some trivia, but you couldn't really ever do more because computers, absent constant input and iteration just couldn't really do anymore until now, until generative artificial intelligence and very large language models that take those basic prompts and then basically bend all their training sets to solve precisely one problem. What pixel or what character should come next and then next and then next and next and next. Forget spending days or weeks in a library or even hours and hours on the web in a word processor. You can just tell the model to write you a blog post or give you a list of viral video ideas or categorize a data set of your collectibles or extend the background of a photo or create a dozen thumbnail ideas or 
maybe one day re-render episode one as if it was written by Lawrence Kasdan and directed by Irvin Kirshner. Or now even just make me a game that plays like Pac-Man, but with Frodo and the Nazgul. I mean, I mean, yes, it can barely nail anything right now. Not perfectly, not in the least. And it's often as confidently wrong as an influencer with a hot take. But with a guiding human mind, it can iterate and improve, prototype and previs most of the work in minutes and hours that used to take us days and days and weeks and weeks of work. And right now, we're typing all of this into a command line straight out of Zork, but it'll be multimodal soon enough with voice prompts and virtual reality interfaces straight out of Iron Man. Like we'll all be just sipping on a beverage and ask why are our messages blowing up? What's going on? And then like, crap, I didn't expect that announcement until the second week of September. See if anyone from the company emailed me any background info and assets. Thank them and tell them I'm on it if they did. Then grab the press release, scrape the web page, find the top 10 things everyone is loving and hating on from social media, and give me a six minute script in my usual style, but restructure it using the audience retention data that we compiled last week. And then take whatever assets they sent and whatever they've posted on the web and give me five viral thumbnail concepts, two with face, one with YouTuber face, and two with product shots. And yes, it raises so many questions, not just the facetious ones I asked there, but core ones like what's real and what's not, what's human and what's not, what's remixed or just plain ripped off and what's not. But the existential ones like, will this cause the same kinds of massive societal shifts like the agricultural and industrial revolutions was the last age not really the information age, but this now is? And will that cause mass unemployment or just massive shifts? Like when we went from handcrafted toys to mass production, will we have these large data models capable of generating and regenerating anything that's come before across every known field of the arts and sciences? Will they be instantly satisfying every whim of the tiny percentage left with resources enough to still have whims but leaving everyone else with nothing of value left to trade for even the most basic of human needs. And then what happens to those people? Where do they shift? Will the vast majority of us be left somewhere in the middle, literally ugly bags of mostly water middleware humans, just endlessly condensing and expanding input and output, passing it from one prompt to another, the age of labor-saving devices and computational convenience, finally forcing every job, all of us into 24 seven productivity with zero marginal creativity, essentially endlessly spell and sanity checking a system that we're just begging to reach singularity. Will the vast majority of us just be stuck in information factories the way our parents and grandparents were stuck in physical factories? Or will we be taking those first tentative steps towards the actual Star Trek future where 80% of the informational grunt work maybe manual grunt work as well, depending on the robots and printers, is just taken over by machines, freeing us to focus on the 20% of truly creative, innovative work that will push the human condition forward in a way never before possible. Generating those vast majority of messages and reports, outlines and architectures, first drafts and pre-visualizations that took all of the time, but delivered so precious little of the final value and letting us concentrate on picking and polishing, directing and iterating on the end results. Because over the last many decades, we've gotten better and better tools, computers, the internet, mobile, but instead of letting us do the same work in less time, instead of making our lives better, They've let, and we've let ourselves to do more work and more time, only made our lives busier. And I'm an optimist, I'm excited. I truly believe this is the most interesting, most ethically complex, most empowering and disenfranchising development in modern history. And it's a topic I really wanna cover more on this channel and something I hope at least some of you will stick with me for and share your electric dreams, nightmares, and opinions on with me in the comments and on social. Because this is the next, never mind big thing, the next enormous thing, the next thing that changes everything again. And to get in on the ground floor of all of it, check out Introduction to Neural Networks on Brilliant.org, today's sponsor. Brilliant makes college level courses available to you, to me, to everybody. It's just the most intuitive and engaging way to learn AI, computer science, math, physics, quantum mechanics, game theory, and so much more 
in a visual, hands-on way, all designed for high-velocity learning to help you stay focused and reach your goals fast. Because Brilliant makes learning like a game with fun features that let you challenge yourself and compete with others, all with helpful explanations along the way, so you're never left guessing or frustrated, just learning and fantastic. Brilliant has thousands of lessons with more added monthly, and to try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Richie or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Rene Ritchie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does checking out this video for more on why I think the AI wars have begun, but maybe not everyone has taken the battlefield just yet. Give it a watch and I'll see you in the next video.